Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And yes, we are getting started later on purpose. Uh, there is a reason. <laughs> this is going to be us talking. Um, so it really didn't seem like a really big deal to start a little bit later because you're going to be seeing us all the time. So this is a different program. This is where we answer your questions and talk about PERSI, the Periodical Source Index. So hello, everybody. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us for this program. Um, we, yes, we are excited to have you here. Absolutely. And I, I know this may sound just a little bit parochial, um, but um, the three of us and our colleagues here at the Genealogy Center can think of precious little else when we really want to talk about something that can have a really amazing impact on your research lives. It's really not a whole lot better than Percy, at least to get you started, at least to get you thinking, at least to fill in some gaps. So be prepared to send us your questions, your comments, and um, I think my two colleagues will um, go through the quick spiel about how you can send us those things. Yes, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen really quick. First of all, I just wanted to make sure that you guys know that there is no handout, but I did want to go ahead and show you where the genealogy events are so you can get registered for our upcoming programs um, all here all the time. So just go ahead and click register for any of the upcoming ones. And I'm going to oh also make sure to sign up for our gene genealogy gems. We'll put the link in the chat at some point. Um, but this is our monthly e-newsletter and there's some amazing information in there but the biggest thing is is the programs you you get to find out what programs are coming up so i just wanted to address the handout really quick so i always want to just go back to the foundation for just a few seconds for those of you who may not really understand what percy is or may have remembered at one time known at one time and now you're feeling fuzzy about it um, the format, the look, the feel has changed radically coming to the free side, coming to the ACPL side this year. So PERSI stands for Periodical Source Index, and it's kind of intentionally named Periodical Source Index because it's not your, your usual or your expected index. Most times when we go to an index, we expect an every name, every proper noun, every location type of index. Um, we just didn't think we'd be able to index enough at that level. So we wanted to kind of find a middle ground where we could index literally millions of subject entries. So the periodical source index is a subject index. And I know some people are like, oh man, would really love to have an every word, every name index. Um, we would too, but we would be over the moon with that. Um, again, just we wanted to be able to provide some access to more articles. So there's more than 3 million subjects free on the library's website. Um, Allison brought up the screen there where it says periodical source index. Um, again, it looks different than any other time iteration that you've experienced Percy. So if you've used it before, it'll be a learning curve, but that's okay. I think this is more straightforward and easier, if you will, than Percy on a number of the other information aggregators that we partnered with over the years. And, you know, what we like to say around here is we really embrace free. So you don't have to pay for this. You don't have to pay for access to this anymore. Um, so it's an index, a subject index. And the search mechanisms, which my colleagues and I will be running through this evening, um, are, are a little different. But I think they're quickly learned. They're easily learned. So once you get over the feeling of like, well, this doesn't look like an every name index. Well, it's not. And this doesn't look like other indexes. Well, it isn't. Uh, but I like to tell people, and people have smiled at me, and a few people have said they would take me up on this challenge, but I haven't heard from them ever. Um, I believe that if you don't use periodicals in your family history, family stories quest, you are potentially eliminating about a third of the material that could provide you with answers, suggestions, hints, sources where you could continue your exploration. In addition, wherever you have a brick wall where you think 
you found everything online, you think you found every monograph and Google Books and Internet Archive and your favorite library in our library, and you still are up against that brick wall, more often than not, well over 50% of the time, the answer to your brick wall problem, or at least the answer to get you on the path to a solution, is in person. Three million subject entries. So just wanted to give that little uh, foundation uh, for our, our chat this evening. So um, as we're beginning, um, my colleagues, you want to just do we want to just start down the buttons and surnames United States and just do some examples and maybe we can chat about different options along the way. Before we do that, which I think is a great plan, I kind of want to get the temperature of our attendees and see uh, can I just have everyone or anyone who wants to answer this question in the chat? How many of you have used Percy before and how many of you have used Percy um, since it's been, since it's come home to the genealogy center? Okay, yes, yes. Newbies to Percy, never heard of it till now. Newbie, newbie. Yeah, it's a lot okay. of new people. Great, I love that. Wow. Thank you for okay. sharing. This is yeah. good. I, I like to get an idea of where we're starting. So let's start from the beginning. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of you are newbies or very little. <clears throat> Some people have said that they're scared of it. Don't be scared. It's a, it's, it can be something new as always, just a little bit confusing, but we can help you. It's a monster that, index in the best possible ways. Right. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And the other thing is, is we truly want you to be successful. So if you're having trouble, always contact us and we can see what's going on and see how we can help you. Definitely. Definitely. I also did put the link to Sonny Morton's lecture in the chat. Apparently it starts at 9 p.m. Eastern. I mean, I'd be curious to see what she's going to present about. So It'll be if right anybody wants this a double one. dose of Percy, go for it. Someone just put in chat, they used Percy 20 years ago. Um, it's a little different. It is. And um, in 20 years, probably almost 2 million additional subject entries and, and free. So, Well, why don't we kind of just do a quick run through. Um, I can drive here and why don't you guys give me some things to search? Let's start with some surnames. Ooh, let's do a hard one first. Since all of our customers who have you know trouble, yep. uh, they they it's always the hard ones. Uh, let's try Church and then Gillespie. Okay, so Church. So you guys see, first of all, you can click here to order articles, but we'll come back to that. But we have the article title, the periodical, the year published, and the publisher. And I want you to note that, first of all, that there's little carrots here. Can you alphabetical order? You're published. 1798. That's kind of cool. Publisher. There you go. So let's go back to the original. What other things do you guys want to point out here? Why don't you scroll to the bottom? And it says uh, showing one to 10 of 496 entries. So um, someone might say, oh my goodness, you, you mean I have to look through 496 entries? And the answer is no. Um, so one of the things you can do is right above where it shows you the entries, you can search the article title field. And so what things would you search on? You can look at the first 10 and get some ideas. Oh, I can search maybe on a given name. I can search on a date. I can search on a, a location like Kentucky, Kansas, Michigan. And it automatically just melts your entries down to just those that fit that particular search. And if you wanna see all the ones where like, <clears throat> you know, a year within a certain decade, is like mentioned in the title. So for example, if you're looking for the 1890s, just type what, yeah, or 189. 
money. Uh, and it'll, yeah, and it will show you 1891, 94, 97. And look right underneath where um, Allison keyed 189, you melted your almost 500 search results down to 21. And if you say, you know, 21 is a lot to look for, well, it's just two and a half screens or Allison, if you wanted to scroll back up to the top, you can make it so that you can see all 50 or 100 entries. So you can go up to 100 entries at a time. So you click on 100, they'll all be there. And that filter is still, I, I believe the filter is still in play. So one of the things I also would like to note, um, so I started typing Kentucky and Illinois just to show you. They weren't coming up. I don't know if anybody noticed that because if you start looking at the actual article titles, they're abbreviated. So it's OH for Ohio or GA, Georgia. But this is where it can be helpful. Okay, you start to see the GA and it's a Georgia Historical Society. Um, you see the Ohio and it's Ohio. So you could also do a search up here and this will search all these fields. I do want to point out that someone asked in the chat, will Percy leave East ACPL like it did in the past? Um, so great question. Um, love that question. Um, Percy never really left ACPL. Um, so not that this matters a whole lot, so I'll do it quickly. The tortured <laughs> path of published Percy. Um, we have published in every single medium possible started out in paper, went to microfiche in a collaborative deal with FamilySearch, BC, before computers. Then it went to CD-ROMs, then DVDs, then online. Uh, online at Ancestry, online at ProQuest, online at Find My Past. But all the while, we were the ones that are doing the indexing. And if you visited our research facility, you could always access those here in the Genealogy Center. Um, what we did um, very recently, end of last year, into this year, is we decided to make Percy freely available um, and not go through the process of having to partner with an information aggregator who needed to make money. So we don't need to make money. We don't need to partner with someone who needs to make money. Um, we just wanted to make this really awesome amount of information available to you. Now, what we can't do because we uh, don't have the IT resources and because we're not partnering with an information aggregator is we can't do some of the really smooth things that a Find My Past or an Ancestry might be able to do. So I know this might be heresy. So if anybody's standing up, you might want to sit down because you don't want to fall down. Um, you can't do boolean searches with this version of percy i know i know it's terrible how can we librarians not offer boolean searching um we would just need a more expensive server and supported with some code and we just don't have that investment to make right now with covid etc but these search boxes though use them particularly the ones at the bottom where you can search by field it's pretty amazing how quickly you can get used to um, really narrowing things down. Um, Allison and Elizabeth both alluded to that geographic thing. Type in GEO for Georgia, but look at postal abbreviations as well. We use a lot of postal abbreviations to save space. Um, it's neat to be able to put in cemetery and you can do cemetery and cemeteries without having any truncation symbols because just start typing c-e-m-e-t it will get cemetery singular cemeteries plural all those will come up in in your search results i know it's a different way of looking at it a different way of thinking about it but it is a really slick way of looking quickly through three million plus subject entries so while there are some things that you say eh, why can't i do this like i could in ancestor like i could in find my past yeah we left a few things behind not intentionally but we wanted to make it available to everyone for free 
And there's just so much good information here. And if, again, as my team has always said, our colleagues continue to say, if you're having trouble, just email us. Hey guys, I'm looking for this. See if there's an article about cemeteries in this county and your index doesn't make sense. Can you, can you search that for me and give me the results? We will be happy. We'll be happy to do that. So know, but did anybody see this? Mrs. Gillespie arrested for climbing cemetery fence. I just, I love, I love what this Who is she about. and can I be her descendant? <laughs> right? I don't know what this is, but I love it. Oh, that's great. Um, I want to take this opportunity to remind everybody that if you have questions for us, uh, put them in the Q&A. Uh, conversation happens, you know, in the chat. So your questions will get buried. I'm just lucky that I happened to see that question in the Q&A about Percy leaving ACPL. So like I said, if you have questions for us, put them in the Q&A, but conversation, comments, use the chat for that. Good springboard, Elizabeth. Let's take just the first two questions that I see in the Q&A. Um, Suzanne wrote, how much of the published journals are covered? Do you have access to everything published? Um, the answer to the first question is yes. And the answer to the second question is working on it. So what do I mean by that? Um, we try to index from the current volume back to volume one, issue one of every single title. Is that complete? No, it's not. We probably, and this is just Kurt's kind of look at the project since I've been involved since the beginning. I'm guessing, and it's a guess, but I think an educated guess, we're at about 60 to 65% of subject indexing, everything, local history, genealogy, ethnic history um, that we have in our collection. And we try to have everything in our collection. So if there's 3 million that make up about 60%, um, there's several million more to go. So we have an active indexing program, not as active as we would like, but again, we're kind of bound by resources. And so as many resources as we can throw at it, um, it's really good indexing, though. It's not just a quick scan through things. Uh, we pick up small little articles, and we kind of commit a little bit of heresy. So again, I hope you're still sitting down, because uh, we violate one of the major principles, or sort of violate one of the major principles of indexing. You're supposed to key what you see, right? Well, there are a lot of publishers, particularly of um, genealogical society materials and some ethnic societies where the titles tend to be more fanciful rather than descriptive. So um, in the Great Plains, um, I don't know why, and it's not a bad thing, but they're enamored with calling cemetery transcriptions bones and stones or bones of. Well, you know, most people when they're looking for cemetery inscriptions are gonna look for cemeteries, probably not bones, a lot, but you know, they might pick something up looking under bones. Um, so we will capture that title, Bones and Stones, and then we'll add to it Newton County, Indiana Cemeteries or Bones and Stones, AME Church Cemetery, Lee County, Kentucky. Or if there's in sections, we'll even append on a section name. So um, we are trying to index everything possible. Um, we have been known to, don't tell anyone though, we've been known to take suggestions on, you know, do you have any more indexed for the sunflower published from Kansas? And we'll say, well, let's take a look and see how much we've indexed and maybe we can finish it off or do the next 10 years or however much remains to be indexed. So um, great question, um, because we really passionately believe that periodical literature can really help so many people find parts of their family stories that in addition to indexing them by subject, we are committed to having copies of every single periodical published by a genealogical society, a historical society, or an ethnic society, basically around the world. There's a few non-English language countries, non-Roman alphabet countries that we have a hard time penetrating. So Russia, China, 
um, some of the Baltic countries, but we really try to have major publications for even those countries and for North America, British Isles, Eastern and Western Europe, we try to have a, a really great collection. With North America and the British Isles, we try to be comprehensive, like comprehensive, everything. Let me just take one more question. Um, Before you go to the next question that I know you want to ask, uh, can we loosely define what we refer to as periodicals? Because I see a couple of people asking, like, what exactly do you mean by periodicals? Uh, that's yeah. a great question. We, we as librarians and information professionals, I think we throw jargon around way too much. So <laughs> I apologize yeah. to, to everyone for, for the jargon. Um, periodical is like a general broad term. Uh, in periodicals, we include newsletters, journals, quarterlies, annuals, and it's periodical means it's published periodically. And that periodical, that period may be monthly, quarterly, annually, or even irregularly. Uh, there's a number of really good periodicals that haven't fared too well during COVID. And so they're behind in their publication schedules. And some of them are just reverting to or saying, eh, we'll publish when we publish. Um, so uh, the uh, what makes periodicals different from monographs or books is that in a book, if you're doing a county history, one of our colleagues helped a group of people write a county history for Allen County several years ago ended up being two volumes. The whole idea was to try to get comprehensive, put it in a book. Well, with societies, they like to publish things serially to continue to put information out for their members. Let's just focus quickly. Good question, Elizabeth. Yeah. Let's focus quickly on, on newsletters. So a lot of society newsletters have what? Business, when their next meeting is, um, the treasury report, the minutes, this, that, and the other thing, and, and you're, you're probably already thinking what I'm thinking, who the heck needs that? I mean, it doesn't help me with my family history. Well, you're right, but our indexers go through those anyway, and they pick out the one or seven or two or five articles that may be interlaced amongst the treasury report and the books for sale in the next meeting um, that actually are about families in the geographic area, about organizations and their records like churches and universities and colleges and boarding schools and um, maternity wards, all that might be sprinkled in through general business and newsletters. A number of societies, I'm gonna use the Indiana Genealogical Society as one, um, they publish a quarterly with the specific intent of putting out there for us things they believe have never been published before. So the poorhouse records of, you know, Tell City in Indiana, uh, maybe some military records from Civil War veterans from Steuben County, maybe some things over in the Wabash Valley area about tax records or cemetery records. So you will find societies publishing things that really aren't in books and they aren't online. You can't just Google this cemetery. Wow, here comes all of the all of the cemetery uh, transcriptions or even cemetery tombstone images. So does that, do you think Elizabeth kind of answer that question? Yeah, I think so. Thank you. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Um, so if I find an article of interest, does Allen County have the article that I can view or how do I access it? I was hoping someone would ask this question because I wanted to get to this. Um, and there are three ways. And I'm going to put them in order that I think you should explore. And Allison has already queued it up. So every single article over on the right-hand side, you see publisher. Now you'll be able to tell, I really believe, you'll be able to tell with many of them whether that publisher is still in existence or not. A uh, periodical whose last publication date was 1913, that publisher probably isn't still in, in existence, but um, you can Google it as Allison has uh, brought up. So you can Google a society, you can get updated contact information. Maybe they even have some issues of their newsletter, journal quarterly, available right on their website. More and more societies are doing that. So from Percy, you find the publisher. So number one, I strongly recommend to everyone, and it's not the first thing that jumps into people's mind, contact the society. And if you're having trouble contacting, do exactly what Allison did. Jump over to Google, 
search it. What pops up? See if you can get to their website um, to confirm the address and better yet, get an email address, get maybe some online information um, that maybe they have a little query box somewhere on, on their website. As many societies that are, that's about how many different websites there are. So um, it's a great thing. Number two, so contact the society. If that doesn't pan out for you, use WorldCat. Um, it stands for Worldwide Catalog. WorldCat, you can search the title in WorldCat. I've always been fascinated with this. In WorldCat, you can find what libraries own that title and you can sort them by your zip code, like which ones are the closest to where you live. And so um, you can see for this particular title, we have our library location and God, it's real close because it's here, but you can see the other libraries, Newberry, Chicago, Wisconsin Historical, Mid-Continent, um, and Independence, Missouri. So use, use WorldCat to see if other libraries have it. The third way you can request a copy of an article is to contact um, the Genealogy Center. And we have a link to that article form. We're probably gonna be redoing this article form in the near future. And I just throw that out for your general information. So if you click on it in a month or three months and it doesn't look like this, don't worry. It, it'll be a new form. As long as this one pops up, you can keep using this one. So, um, with this particular form, um, we have where you can fill out the article title, the journal, all these things that are on here, you can find in the citation for the periodical. So if it's not there under periodical, then you don't need to worry about filling it in. Um, we want to improve this form because we want to make it fillable online. I know some of you will laugh at us. Please don't laugh too hard, okay? Just, just a little bit. Um, our library still does not have a ubiquitous, easy to use, or really even any pay agent that you as a library patron can access. So it's either emailing us and at some point you're gonna have to find an envelope and write a check for a small amount of money to cover costs and handling. There is a question about if there are plans for us to be able to have electronic payment. Well, this isn't true, but I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> I keep clearing my throat tonight because I lose my voice regularly, just stomping for the library having an online pay agent. Uh, no, that's not why my voice is a little, um, loose this evening is from a lot of talking today. Good talking. Uh, but yes, short answer, yes. Uh, we have two really great opportunities to leverage how much people want to use an online pay agent and how much easier it would be for everyone. Uh, yet this year, uh, we haven't had two golden opportunities in one calendar year in a long time. So um, Allison will be working with me, our IT team, our finance team to really like okay, how do we get this across the finish line? Because we have a lot of new IT components. We have an awesome new IT manager. We're doing all kinds of neat things to make life better, richer, fuller for our patrons. So we just wanna kind of squeeze this into that plethora of uh, new improvements. But um, just recapping quickly, contact the society. That will be the quickest way to get a copy of the article. And you may even want, you may even be enticed by them to join. They may show you all kinds of other publications they have, not just periodicals. Second is use WorldCat to find a library close to you. And third is to contact us. Why do I put us third? I put us third because everyone contacts us. And, and we say, you know, average six to eight weeks. Um, you know how you get an average, right? You have some that are done sooner and some that are done a lot longer and you get the average in the middle. Um, so we have a lot of requests right now, a lot. I know you like those precise numbers, but still, we have many, many, many requests. 
like a number of organizations, we are uh, challenged to uh, find the bandwidth um, and the time to to do all of those. We don't we don't get extra time, extra resources when you are um, interested and excited about what you're going to find, and you should be excited about what you find in Percy. For those who have sent us Percy requests recently and you're you're waiting on your articles, we really appreciate your patience. We are we are absolutely doing our best to fulfill the requests as they come in. I just want to make a point to say that. So a couple things I just wanted to note. I've been kind of playing in Percy as we've been talking, so you guys can see some examples. Um, just a reminder with the surnames, it is very rare for a family to actually have an entire article written about them. These are typically articles that are about um, collections within these specific locations, boots on the ground people who are transcribing or writing about or putting information together on the people from their area, in their area, et cetera. It's not necessarily about one family. You might get lucky and your family's included in an article and it, it's part of a bigger article. So you have to figure out what articles they might be a part of. So you have to get creative. Um, when you're looking at the different locations, you gotta kind of look beyond the whole, okay, I'm looking for death. So I'm only gonna search death. You have to look for that death event and everything surrounding that death event. Yes, everything. So death, died, die. Um, it could be Disease. murder. Murder. Yeah, murder up there. Homicide. Um, you could be looking for burial, funeral. You could be looking for the cemetery. You could be looking for any sort of word that could be associated with death, suicide. There we go. Um, so look for those different words and get creative. You don't know what you can find. It, it's, you kind of have to dig. It, it's looking for those puzzle pieces without knowing what they are, like most of our research. It's right. just in a different database. Well, and also I think key is to not be afraid to leave the surname search, to just go look for this, look at the articles by subject category. So I think Allison's gonna pull up an example. And while she's doing that, I'm going to quickly answer a couple more questions. Um, Natalie asked, is there a way I can list all the articles of a particular periodical title, uh, like Distant Crossroads, for example? At the present time, no. Is that a feature that's on the table being talked about and um, used about to how we can implement that? Yes. This is a frequently asked um, request from patrons everywhere. So thank you for thank you for that question and validating again that, um, that that's something we're seriously considering. I do have a workaround for that. If anybody is curious, if sure. you know where the periodical is from, you can then search for that periodical title in that location. So pick the location it's at and then do that search in here. So let's say we're looking for this periodical from Glendora. And so you're looking for for Glendoran and want to get all of those, that's still 418 entries. So this is where that is, that periodical is located. And you might have to, when going to say LA County, for example, um, pick, okay, I wanna see all the Glendoran periodical articles that came out about uh, tax lists. So you could do it that way too. There's no tax list. Well, right. not in the other miscellaneous yeah. category. You you know. What yeah, I, mean. I know. Yeah. But there is a dog costume contest winners. What? All right. So Trudy asked, in the past, I knew ACPL only included periodicals that you received as a subscription. How do you find the periodicals you search that you don't have a subscription for? Um, so I think I'm understanding your question, um, Trudy. Um, we gladly accept donations, sub, you know, donations of subscriptions. We do not depend on that. Um, if we don't get a donation of a subscription for XYZ Journal or PQ Newsletter, um, we will subscribe. Um, we actively subscribe to over. 
thousand different periodical titles that's subscribe plus the ones we get on exchange plus the ones we get as gifts so we're pretty serious about it you you don't have to give it to us to be in the periodical source index nor do we um, just do the ones that we have traditionally subscribed to we have a full-time serials assistant who is amazing absolutely amazing we have already sworn her that you know Tell us what you need, but you can never retire. You just can't retire. Uh, but does Herculean work? Uh, every month, there are several new subscriptions. And when we subscribe to a periodical for the first time, the second question we ask after, how can we subscribe to this is, how can we get all the issues that you have ever published? Because we want all of what we call the back issues in our collection. And we want those for researchers to be able to use and also for us to be able to index and put in the periodical source index. So thank you for that question, Trudy. There is a related question asking, sure. can you donate a periodical in a digital format if we don't have it? Oh my goodness, you guys are awesome. Um, that's a great question. And the answer is, mm, yeah. depends. If you want to. So a couple of things we won't do. Uh, we will not violate copyright and we will not uh, violate fair use. And we really don't like to poke an angry dog. Uh, so um, uh, if you send us a digitized copy of a periodical that's still in copyright, we would be glad to receive that. And what that would do is it would prompt us to contact the society and say, are you cool with us posting this? Most societies will say, absolutely not. Um, a few will. Um, we hope to someday um, start a methodical clip through all of the periodicals that we index and just ask, beginning with whatever society we want to. We probably won't begin in the A's because I'm a contrarian. But wherever we begin, we'll say, is there any way that we can post back issues that aren't selling of your periodical on the website and link it to Percy for free? Um, is there a rolling five years? Like you want the current plus four years embargoed. After five years passes, yeah, you don't mind if they're on the website. Many societies also will probably say no to that because they want it on their website, which is cool. Totally understandable. So a long answer to your question about well, will we accept it? Absolutely, we accept every digital donation. What we can do with it right now, pretty limited because we do want to adhere boldly and loudly to every copyright law code and and to the principles of fair use um, the third thing i said we don't want to poke an angry dog um, there are a number of societies across the pond who really don't want anyone to have anything to do with their periodical they don't want um, us to even index it i mean they're kind of annoyed that, that we're indexing it so for a lot of foreign periodicals we will not fill request we will send you the contact information for the society and say you need to contact them for a copy that that again is why that floated to the top of our list contact the society because there are some societies across the pond who that's what they want they want them and only them to be providing copies of their articles so i hope that helped I do see sure. a question that I think we should grab really quick. Sure. Um, someone's asking, if I come, how do I use Percy? The thing I want people to know is that you can search Percy from home. You can gather up all the different articles you want to look at and then see the different ways that you can access those materials. You don't have to necessarily physically come here to only search Percy. I don't want you guys to think that you have to make a trip here. Now, we that's are the repository. That, that's yes. why it's right on the center of, of our homepage. That's an excellent point, Allison. It's right on our homepage because you can click on it and go. You can click on it and search. I'm sorry. Yes. No, that's great. And we want you guys to have access to these articles. Because of copyright, because of the nature of what these are, we can't just give them to you online. Um, so having this index is basically trying to give you the tool to then go to the publisher, to then go to WorldCat, to then request an article if you have to, to get the information that you're seeking. We want you guys to have the tools and we want you to be able to search from home. It's not 
it's not something that we want to put a barrier up for you. That's why it's free. That's why it's on our website. That's why you can search it from anywhere you want in your bathing suit, in your pajamas, whatever you're feeling that day. It's great. You know, listening to cicadas, glancing at the sunset and drinking your favorite liqueur like Bailey's, you know, all of that. So uh, if I can just elaborate a little bit, Allison, um, what's neat about Percy again is if you do decide to come and we would love to see you here for, and it's a great town to visit, a very economical town to stay, and you'd have access to this really wonderful physical collection here. So if you do come, you know, because we've indexed it, that will be here. So everything you find in Percy, you know, will be here uh, because we use our collection to, to, to build the index. But please don't think you have to be here to search Percy. Um, you don't. You can get all kinds of great information, create a list for yourself. And then if you can't travel here, use that three-step process. Contact the publisher, use WorldCat, contact us to get copies of the actual articles. And I want to make a point to say that if you're planning a trip and you're making your your pretty little list of all the articles you're going to go find while you're here. If you have any articles that you need that are coming from publishers in the British Isles, put those at the top of your priority list because those are some of the ones that we cannot make copies for you. So prioritize. Like with oh, most I also things. see, yes, we have the call number, which means that the, the book is physically here the, the material is physically here it doesn't mean that the book or the item is online again our wrists are tied we cannot put things that are under copyright online it's we can't do it we can't break copyright as much as we would love to help each and every one of you um but we are still trying to get information out to you in a way that is different being able to have this index is something that you wouldn't be able to have otherwise Having periodicals indexed is kind of rare to begin with, like an individual periodical indexed. It's rare to have an entire series of periodicals, thousands of them that relate to the topics you're searching. That's pretty amazing. And that's what we're trying to give you. Yes, I, I, I'm going to pick up Jan's question real quick here because uh, I, I, I think it's an easy one. And thank you, Jan, for, for the question. I'm reading this out of the chat rather than the Q and or no, I, I, I'm reading out the, out the Q and A. Sorry. Um, does Percy index the big periodicals like the New York GNB, the Record, uh, NGSQ, NHGS Register, American Genealogist, etc.? Yes, those are awesome publications, and yes, we do index those. What's neat is we index. I mean, the New England Register. New England Historic Genealogical Society Register has been published for, oh my gosh, more than 100 years. Um, we index the bulk of the back issues, oh, I'm going to say more than 20 years ago. And we had a phenomenal person, Ann Budd, who, like many of our indexers, literally leafed through that page by page because, I'm going to use the phrase, back in the day, they would bury like a paragraph about a family a small little section about a transcribed Bible or a small little cemetery that's on a half a page. Um, at that time, most periodicals didn't have a really robust, comprehensive table of contents page. So they were really invisible. You'd have to look through. And she indexed all of them. So you have an Uber index to the register in, in Percy as well as the NGSQ and the American Genealogist and other really well-known uh, publications. Absolutely. Can I just ha quickly answer a question that a couple people asked similar things regarding like format and someone was like the call number, does that refer to the article? Can, can we just explain what we do with the periodicals after we get them, say collect a year or so worth, we, we bind them. <laughs> yeah, um, we will bind them and put them on the shelf. We're in it for the long haul. Um, we want our grandchildren's grandchildren to have access to these materials. So our library, like a lot of other research libraries, we're freely open to the public, but we want the public to come here for generations. So as Elizabeth articulated, depending on the size of the periodical, sometimes we'll bind five years together because they're 16th of an inch wide. 
Sometimes we only bind a year because they're quarterlies and they're a couple hundred pages a piece. So you have a nice little two inch tome. Uh, but yes, we bind them so we can uh, make them sit on the shelf straighter. It preserves them. And not to divulge any secrets, but so we can put a little security tag in an unmentioned unknown spot. So it won't walk around, let's say, after we have it here in the department. So Catherine asks a question. I'm going to handle this one real quick too. Is there a way to search for an article by author? If not, is this being considered? No, there's not a way to search um, by author of an article or compiler or collaborators. And it is not on the short list. Um, I know for some individuals, this would be beneficial. Um, for the vast majority of individuals, and we use our own patron population of many thousands of people a year. And we use our more than a generation worth of experience with Percy. Um, the people, or the number, I should say the number of times we're asked for that question is, I mean, thimble small. Um, so um, it, it's just not something that we have done. We haven't captured that data. So there's no way to index it, except to go back and capture it again. So. Um, Sorry if that's a disappointment, but most researchers don't know and kind of don't care who wrote the article. They want to know about their family, this cemetery, etc. cetera. So um, we made a decision back in 1985 and we're kind of stuck with it. If that's the right way, so. Um, I see there's a specific question. And I'm going to pull this Shipley. up. Shipley? Yeah. That surname is really familiar. So the Adam Shipley, it's the Bible, wherever that might be. What was the question? Yeah, where is the question? It's at the very bottom of the Q&A. Um, Rebecca is asking it. Okay, so it's the Bible, Indiana, Daughters of the American Revolution magazine. Um, so what this is telling us, what, what you're seeing is there's a Bible that's been transcribed in the Daughters of the American Revolution magazine. It happened in 1967, and we do have that publication and it's on our shelves. Volume 101, issue five, May of 67. And the title means that as Allison articulated, it's a Shipley Bible record of some sort. And they just pulled quickly a geographic location associated with that. So it would be Indiana. Does that mean everyone in the Bible was born, married, and buried from Indiana? No, but it's a prominent geographic location. We hope that made sense, right? Yeah, that made sense. I, to me, it made sense. Um, I also want to click on the article title keyword search because this is slightly different. I've been poking around in the locations so people could see what's going on and how that works. Um, and the different countries, which can be a little overwhelming at times. Um, but the article title, this is if you already know what the article title is, or you have an idea of the title that you're looking for, because this is going to search everything. You, you really have to have an idea because this is, this is a little intense. Um, so I could also do that same, same search. If I go back in here, do the Adam Shipley Bible. We're going to see what comes up this time. So is it, it oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, see, and that's part of the problem. Yeah. So the, the reason this can be overwhelming is because you don't have that um, Boolean search. You, you can't just say, okay, this is what I'm doing. And I mean, the page is still loading. It is. But if you, if you were to say do like Shipley Bible, and then narrow, you can then narrow down the search results. So less words is better, because then you can so, filter it again. Right. Somebody else was um, asking about canals. Um, so you could do canal, and it's going to search everything. And then if you're looking specifically for, okay, the Erie loading, Canal, you can get in there. There we go. Um, in the titles, you can get more specific, like 
the 1800s. That's going to reduce the number, although that's still quite a few. Yeah. So you have to <laughs> you have to be a little bit creative with that article keyword search. It, it's not it's not going to just be Google for you. So um, Amy has Amy Crow um, has put into the chat that you can do the article title search with quotes, but it would have to be exact to how it is in the database. So that that's a, a good point. Good point, Amy. Thank you. I want to I want to grab another one out of chat, even though we've said put, put your questions in the Q and A. So with my Visit Fort Wayne hat on. Uh, Linda Brown asks, what is the best airport to fly into to get there from California? And so the answer is, one of my favorite answers, yes. Uh, so Fort Wayne does have an airport and all the major carriers in this really contorted time period we live in um, do fly or connect into Fort Wayne. But Fort Wayne uh, has direct flights to hubs not too many cities. Um, so it's like uh, nearly 10 major hubs. So we fly direct on American from Fort Wayne to Philadelphia. We fly from Fort Wayne to Chicago, Fort Wayne to Atlanta, Fort Wayne to Detroit, Fort Wayne to Minneapolis. That Fort Wayne to Detroit connection likely will go away because Delta is cutting back on, on their flights. What? Um, yeah, yeah, Fort Wayne to Detroit is probably going away. Uh, that's what I hear. But he here are some opportunities. One. The reason why I wanted to take this question, Linda, is because I had the most awesome, very short email exchange today uh, with uh, someone who helps the Southern California Genealogical Society uh, run their, their website and their virtual offerings. And he was telling me that um, after I answered some of his questions, we were just chatting back and forth. And he said that he'd, he'd love to get here someday. Um, and I said, well, it's a little bit of a trek, but you're always welcome. And he responded that a member of his society drove here and was with us last week. So um, if you're not comfortable with the airfares, et cetera, you can actually drive here. Um, and I'm being just a little facetious, uh, but, but I also do wanna say one more, um, I think really good option. Um, a lot of people will fly into a major city surrounding us. So they'll fly into Chicago and drive to Fort Wayne. They'll drive into, or excuse me, fly into Detroit, Indy, Cincinnati, and drive to Fort Wayne. All those cities are three hours or less from Fort Wayne. For some people, that's a nuisance. For other people, it's like, hey, I'll save hundreds of dollars running a car and come to Fort Wayne. I want to offer you a little tip. If Indianapolis, if you fly into Indianapolis cheaply, you can contact something called Airporter. A-I-R-P-O-R-T-E-R, -E and it's a service for 49 bucks one way. They will shuttle you from the Indianapolis airport to the Fort Wayne airport where you can get a taxi, rent a car, or, or whatever. So um, please don't let um, Fort Wayne being in Northeast Indiana and not uh, a major city like Chicago or Detroit or DC uh, dissuade you. Um, there are really good economical ways to, to get to Fort Wayne. And on American and on Delta, there are times when you can get some really good bargains flying right all the way into Fort Wayne. So we are running a little low on time. So I wanna kind of breeze through some, some additional questions. I'm gonna pick the questions that are easiest to find first. Well, the easiest to answer simply. How did you get to the keyword search? Right here. Yep, beautiful. Um, is there a way to know in advance how many pages are in an article? No. Not really. No, no. we wouldn't but know I, unless, until we pull it off the shelf. I did want to remind people that sometimes when some of the biggest articles I've seen come out of Percy are actually ones that are out of copyright that we still aren't able to put on our website for reasons, but look and see when you're looking in WorldCat if it has a digital component. See if it's already been digitized on the Internet Archive, if it's, if it's been digitized on FamilySearch. Um, if you put it in our catalog, this is a catalog entry for the Kentucky Explorer. If you go to More Info, 
if it's been digitized, it will be down here. It'll have web link and then it'll have a link to it. This one has not, don't look for this one. Um, these are <laughs> within copyright. But if it was 1887, I would say, yeah, that should be digitized somewhere. I should look for that. Mm -hmm. Good point, Which, excellent point. What periodical is that, Allison? Is that the, can, okay, because somebody did ask a specific question about that and I sent Allison a message saying, we need to, we need to get to this one. If you are wanting to know, oh, do you have like such and such year for a particular periodical? The best way to find out that type of information is actually to search in our catalog, because as you can see, if you scroll down, yeah, so you have the call number and then the years next to the call number. That is the most, because it's all in one place versus scattered right. articles. So that's mm -hmm. how I would do that. Yeah. Because keep in mind, not all of those will necessarily be indexed. Right, right. Yeah. So some of these are probably, Let's see, show you guys. <coughs> Okay, so you can see journal, magazine, periodical, print book. Some of these are ebooks. This is where you start to see ebooks, but that's yeah. something different. It's from that. So you want to kind of play around and see what you can find. Oh, well, that's this is a paid website. Don't click on that. <laughs> or click on it and you just won't go anywhere, right? Right. Right, so one of the things you can do is just start searching family search. Um, they have a lot of different things digitized or internet archive. This is, whoa, hi friend. This is usually where I go first. And I just searched their entire collection because they have around 35 million books. There you go. Beautiful. And there's the ones that are out of copyright. Yeah. Someone had asked, how can you tell whether or not an article is split among several issues and to know to order all of them? It might say so, it might not. Um, okay. I've personally experienced like realizing, oh, I need to go pull like all of these things off the shelf because it's split among many issues. Um, if you're, if you've decided if the con if the publisher doesn't exist anymore, if you're deciding to contact us for some reason uh, to order the article, you could make a note of that uh, when you send us the form saying, "Can you tell me if this continues on?" Um, if your form is full, you might have to make another request for that. But we can we could at least answer those questions for you. Yeah, absolutely. So we are just about out of time. Um, this hour went by very quickly. Yes, it did. If we did not get to your question this evening, uh, we are always happy to answer questions, especially questions about Percy. So feel free to send us an email. Our email is genealogy at acpl.info, which I'm gonna stick that into the chat. Uh, also, if you'd like a copy of the chat, send us an email for that as well. And do we have anything else to add? I would just, again, I sound like a broken record and maybe it's because I am. Um, please, for all those, when Elizabeth asked you to take that quick little poll, for all those who haven't used Percy in a long time and all those who have never used Percy, um, I call it a great insomnia buster. It's on our website. You can't sleep some night, don't worry, are you? Watch Stephen Colbert and he's over and you're still not tired. Hop online, go to genealogycenter.org, click on that big button and just take time to play. Play around, see surnames, see United States, British Isles, take time to play. You will be amazed. I, I almost, almost guarantee you will be amazed at, at what you'll find. And pretty soon you're either tired or your alarm's going off and you haven't slept at all. I was about to say. I feel like that could be the opposite of an insomnia buster. It would be for me. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I can get lost in this. Yeah, and then I'm making a list of all the things I want to go look for when I come to work. <laughs> mm -hmm. So hopefully this has gotten people interested or made people more aware of what they can find. Um, but please ask us questions. We understand that this isn't intuitive and we want you to be successful with your searches. Yeah, absolutely. So please do take advantage of Percy as a free 3 million plus item index. And um, if you have a moment, as my colleagues continue to say, and something doesn't make sense to you, you're not being successful, send us an email genealogy at acpl.info. I'm sure it's in the chat a couple of times. And I would also invite, if you feel like it, if you have a couple extra seconds and you've had a success story, send us a success, your success story. Send us the success stories. We, we get vicarious gratification out of your success and your joy. So let us know how it, how it helped you out. Um, we'd be happy to, we'd be happy to hear that. So until next time, and we hope that will be on Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon at 2.30. Um, thank you so much for, for joining us, for engaging with us, um, and good luck with uh, your genealogical endeavors. Finding your stories is such a powerful thing. So have a good evening. Bye.